In this video, we're going to be setting up our entire project by connecting it to a database, setting it up with MVC, and deploying to a server on Heroku so we can view our application on the web. Let's get started now. The first thing we need to do in order to get our project started is to use NPM to initialize our project. If you don't have NPM or Node installed already, make sure to check out my how to install Node video, which will be linked in the cards and the description. So what we need to do is run npm init, and we can just pass dash y to this function, which will default all the parameters to yes, and just give us all the default values instead of our package.json here. Next, we'll change this from index.js to server.js. This is just personal preference, and we can close out of that. That's all we need to do. Next, we can actually install the dependencies that we're going to need in order to get a basic express server up and running. In order to do that, we need to run npm i, which stands for npm install, and pass it the list of packages we want. In our case, we'll use express for our server, ejs for our templating language, and then we'll use express ejs layouts, which will allow us to create a layout file for all of our HTML. We can just enter and let that run. That's going to download all the packages for us, and it's going to add those to our package.json, as you can see here in our dependencies section, and it creates a lock file for us. The last thing that we want to do is install a development dependency. So we can run npm i and you put dash dash save dash dev, which will save this as a development dependency. And we want nodemon, which will allow us to automatically refresh and restart our server every time we make a change. Now that that's done, we can go to our package.json here. We'll see it's a dev dependency and we can actually create the scripts we want for running our server. The first script we're going to want is to be able to start our server normally. So we're just going to call this start. And this is just going to run node server.js. Wrap that in quotes since it's a string. And this is just going to start our server on a production environment without nodemon. Our next is going to be called dev start, which is what we're going to be using most of the time to start our server. And this is going to run nodemon server.js. And this is just essentially the same thing as node server.js, except for it'll automatically refresh our server every time we make a change. So now we can save that and we're completely done with our package.json and npm. The next thing that we want to do is set up our actual server. So we'll create a server.js file. And in here is where we're going to get express and our application up and running. First thing we'll do is we're going to import express from the express library that we installed with npm. And we also want to get the app portion of that by calling this function of express. Next, we'll get the express layouts package that we installed as well. We're just going to require that package in. And now we can work on actually configuring our Express application. So the first thing we want to do is set our view engine. So we'll just say app.set, tell it we want to set the view engine. And in our case, we're going to be using EJS as our view engine. So we'll just pass in EJS here. Also, we want to set where our views are going to be coming from. So we'll say app.set views. And in our case, we're going to put them inside of a views directory. So we want to get our current directory name and just append it here to views. And now if we create a views folder over here in our project, this is where all of the different views of our files are going to go for our server. And lastly, what we want to do is hook up express layouts. So we can say app.set and we tell it we want to set up what our layout file is going to be. And essentially the idea behind a layout file is that every single file is going to be put inside of this layout file. So we don't have to duplicate all of the beginning HTML and ending HTML of our project, such as the header and the footer. So we just say that that is going to be inside of a layouts folder inside of a file called layout. And we also need to tell our express application that we want to use express layouts. So we just say app.use and we pass in that express layouts variable that we included from that library. And we also want to tell express where our public files are going to be. These are just going to be our files such as our style sheets, our JavaScript, all of our images. So we're just going to say that is going to be in a place called express.static public. So again, this is just going to be a folder in our application, which is called public. So if we create that here, now we have a folder with all of our public views and a views folder, which is going to be all of our server rendered views. And this naming of public is just a very common name that's used most of the time when referring to these public files. Now we can just tell our app that we want to listen on a certain port. So we can say app.listen. And we're going to want to set this up to be process.environment.port, which is going to pull from an environment variable for when we deploy. The server is going to tell us what port it is listening to, not us, 
But for development, we're just going to default this to port 3000 since the server is not telling us anything for our hosting platform. So we're just going to use port 3000. And now if we save that, this is all that we need to get our server up and running. And down here, we can run npm run dev start, which is that command that we created earlier. And if we hit enter, you should see that it says that it's starting up our node server. And if we open up our application here, localhost 3000, you can see that our server is running and it says that it can't get anything. And that's because we have no routes set up in our application. So that's what we're going to work on next. Now, in many smaller applications, you may see that people put all of their routes inside of the server.js file. But for a larger application, such as this application, it becomes very hard to manage. So we're going to use MVC to lay out our application and we're going to put all of our routes, which could also be called controllers inside of a routes folder. So we can just create here a routes folder and all of our routes are going to go inside this folder. And the reason we're using the word routes instead of controllers is because in Node.js and Express land, most people refer to controllers as routes, but you can think of them as exactly the same thing. We already have our views folder, which is where all of the views from MVC are going to go. And lastly, we just want to create a folder here called models. And this is where all of our database models are going to be going. Now that we have our MVC structure set up, let's create our very first route, which is going to be our index route. So essentially everything for when we don't actually have a resource or a model in our URL. So in our routes here, we can create a new file, just call it index.js. And inside of here, we're going to set up all the routes, like I said, for our index of our application. And for now, we're just going to set up a single route at our root. So we first need to import express again, because we're using express for our entire application. So we'll get that express variable. And we want to get the router portion of that express variable. So we're just going to call the router function here on express, set this equal to it. And now with that router variable that we just created, we can actually create our roots. So we can just say router.get. This is going to be using the git action in order to get a root here. And this is just going to be our very root of our application. This is just going to be localhost 3000, just like this. And in here, we just pass it a function. And this function is going to take two parameters. One is the actual request of the request. And the next one is the response, which we're sending back. And we're just going to, for now, send a basic default response. So we'll just say response.send. We're just going to send some text that says, hello world, just so we know that this is working. And now, as you see, this is automatically refreshed by Nodemon. And if we refresh our application, you'll see that nothing actually happens. And that's because we haven't actually hooked up our application yet to use this router. Our server doesn't know that this router exists. So we want to import this router into our server. In order to do that, we just want to come down here and require that file that we just created. So we'll just call it our index router. And it's going to be equal to require. And require here is going to take a relative path. So you start it with dot slash, which says relative to where we are, where is this route? And it's inside of our routes folder. And it's just our index route inside of that routes folder. So now we have a reference to this index router right here inside of this require, and we can tell our app to use that. So down here, we can just say app.use, tell it the root path that this is coming from. In our case, this is just the root of our application. So we can just append it a slash right here, which just says very root of our application. And we tell it what router we want to handle that root. And we'll just say it's our index router. And now if we save this, you'll see that we get an issue here with our application. It's crashing because it doesn't know how to get any information from this index file because we're not actually exporting any information from this file. What we want to do is we want to export this router that we've created and set up in this application. So we just go down to the bottom here and we type in module.exports. We want to set that equal to our router. Now, whenever we import this file inside of our application, such as here where we're requiring this, this index router variable is going to be set to this router variable here. And again, after we save that, you see that we're still getting a crash. So if we look back in our trace log here, you can see that it says required is not defined. And it tells us the line here where this is an error. And as you can see, I accidentally typed in required instead of require. So let's change that to require, save that and check. And now it says it's all green. So our server is working. And if we refresh this, you now see we get that hello world text being sent to us from our server. And we can change this to say anything else that we want. And if we save it, refresh our page, you'll see that it's being sent to us from our server. Now that we have our routes being hooked up with our actual server, we can work on integrating our routes with our views. As we created it here in our server.js, we set up this layout file. So let's actually create that layout file for our application. We'll just create a new file here inside a layouts folder. And it's just going to be called layout.ejs. In order to have syntax highlighting inside of an EJS file, make sure you download the EJS language support extension in Visual Studio Code 
if you are using Visual Studio Code. Otherwise, you'll have no syntax highlighting inside of this file. And inside of this file, we're going to set up the boilerplate HTML for every page in our application. In VS Code, you can just type exclamation point and hit enter, and it'll set up some basic HTML for you. We can change the title here to myberry, which is the name of our application. And then inside of the body here, we want to put all of the code that goes inside of our application before and after every single page. So for example, we can just type in some text here that says before. We'll just add a line break so we know that there's a little bit of space in between it. And we want to put something after maybe. So we'll do after with another line break. But in between here, we want to put the content of everything inside of our application. So in order to do that, we're just going to use this syntax, which is a less than sign, a percent sign, and then a hyphen. And in here, we just type the words body. And this is just going to include every single other one of our pages right in here in this body page. So now we can actually create a view for our index of our application. So create a new file, we'll call it index.ejs. And inside of this view here, we're just going to put some code that's called middle. And this is going to be imported from this index.ejs into this layout.ejs file right here where it says body. And now all we need to do is go into our route here. And instead of just sending some basic text, we actually want to render our view. So we can say render and pass in the name of our view, which is just this index.ejs file. Now, if we save that, we get everything green down here and we can refresh our page. And you see that even though our index.ejs only has the text middle in it, we're getting before, middle, and after. And that's because this layout file, this body section, is importing everything from every single one of our pages in our application. And this is going to make developing our application much easier because if we need to change anything in our layout, we only have to do it in one file instead of having to do it in every single one of our files in our application. It also makes it so we don't have to copy and paste all this boilerplate HTML every single time we create a new page. The last thing that we have to do before our application is fully set up is working on getting our models integrated. And to do that, we're just going to connect our application to a local MongoDB database. If you don't already have MongoDB installed on your computer, make sure to check out my how to install MongoDB video, which will also be linked in the cards and the description. So now let's go to our server.js file and actually integrate MongoDB into our application. The first thing that we need to do is install the library for MongoDB. So we just use npm i in order to install this, and it's called Mongoose. This is allowing us to integrate with MongoDB extremely easily inside of our application. There we go, we have Mongoose installed in our application, and now we can work on setting up our database. Let's just do that right here after our application, and we can import Mongoose. So we'll import that from the library we just installed. And now we can set up our connection for our database. The first thing we wanna say is mongoose.connect, and in here we're going to actually put the URL for our connection. But since you never actually want to hard code your connection, you want it to be dependent upon your environment because when you're developing, you want Mongoose to connect to your local MongoDB server. But when you have your application deployed, you want to connect to a server that's on the web somewhere. So if in here, we're going to pass a string for the URL, which is going to come from our environment variables. So we'll say process.env.database URL. And we're going to set this up in just a little bit. And then the next thing that this is going to take is some options for how we want to set up MongoDB inside of our application. In our case, because of the version of MongoDB that we're using, we're going to want to set up a variable here that says use new URL parser. And we're going to want to set that to true. And this is just because the mongoose gem by default uses an older way of accessing data in MongoDB, which is deprecated currently in MongoDB. Depending on when you watch this tutorial, this may already be changed to true by default, so you may or may not need this. You can just play around with it on your own to figure it out. Now, the last thing we want to do is actually just log if we are or are not connected to our database. So we can access the connection here, which is created a variable called db, and we can just get this from mongoose.connection. And then we can just say db on error. So if we run into an error when we're connecting to our database, we're just going to want to print that error out. So instead of here, we can just do console.error error and this will just allow us to print out our error in giant red text in our console and we can just do this once again we can say dot once which is only going to run one time and this is just when we open up our database for the first time so essentially once we connect for the very first time we just want a console.log here that we've connected to mongoose so we can say connected to mongoose and there we go that's all the code that we need to run for this 
But if we try to run our application here, we're going to get an error immediately. And that's because our application doesn't actually have this variable for our database URL. So we need to set that up now. To do that, we're going to be using a library, which is called .env, which will allow us to load in environment variables into our application. So we can just npm i dash dash save dev, since we only want it to be locally that we use this. And we can type in .env. Oops, didn't actually spell that right, .env. Now if we run that, it'll actually go in and install this for us. And we just can create a .env file over here. And inside of this, we put our different variables. In our case, we want to put database URL. And we just want to set this to our database URL. This URL is going to take the form of MongoDB, since we're using MongoDB, colon, double backslash. And then we're going to put in here localhost, since this is going to be local to our application. And since our application is called mybrary, we'll call the database that we're accessing mybrary. And if we say that we now have our database URL, and all we need to do is tell our application to load that into it. So at the very top of our application here, we can just do a simple check to check if we are running in the production environment or not. So we can say process.env.nodeenv. This will be set by default by node. And we want to check if this is not equal to production because we don't actually want to load in this environment variable unless we're in our development environment. So we can say if it's not production, then we want to run some code to actually load up those different dependencies. So we're required.env and we're just going to say dot load. And this is going to load all the variables from our .env file here and it's going to import them into our process.env variable in our application. Now, if we save that and try to rerun our application, you'll see here that it should work. And as you can see, everything is green and we got the message saying that we are connected to Mongoose. And if we refresh our page, our application is still up and running. Now, the very last thing to do is set up our application with Git. So if we just close out of this, we can type in Git init and it'll initialize our repository here. If you don't already have Git installed or don't understand how to use Git, make sure to check out my learn Git in 20 minutes video, which will also be linked in the cards and the description down below. Now that we have git initialized here, we want to create a git ignore file in our project. Just call it dot git ignore. And in here, we're going to put all the files we don't want to include in our git repository. In our case, we don't want to include our .env file because we never want to include these environment variables. They could be sensitive information we don't want to share with the world. And we also want to not include these node modules because as you can see, this is a huge set of dependencies. This is where npm installs everything your application requires and it becomes very, very large. But this package.json and package.lock.json file hold all that information in a much more condensed way so that when someone pulls down your project, they can just run npm install and it'll install all these dependencies in node modules for them. So in our dot git ignore, we wanna also ignore node modules. Now, if we save that, you see in Visual Studio Code, these actually gray out to let you know that they're ignored and these green files are new files we added. So we can run git add with a period after to add everything in our folder and below, which is perfect. Everything's been added and we can run git commit and we can just call it whatever we want. We can just say initial setup. And this is going to add all of these different files to our project. And there we go. We now have everything set up and we can push it to a remote git repository. Now, in order to get that code on GitHub, we could just go to GitHub, click on the create new repository button, give our repository a name in our case, we're just going to call this mybrary since this is the name of our application. Leave the description off for now. Set it to public so that everyone can view it. And we don't want to initialize it with a readme or add a git ignore since we already have all of our information here. We can just click create repository. And now all we have to do is if we see here, we can say or push existing code. All we have to do is copy these commands into our command line here, paste them here, and we can just say git push. And there we go, that'll push all of our code up to master for us. And there we go, we are done. Now if we refresh this page, you'll see that all of the code that we just wrote is up in GitHub for us to use. The last thing I want to do is deploy this code to an actual server so that we can view this on the internet. And the easiest way to do that is going to be through Heroku since we've already set up our code with GitHub. All we need to do is create an account on Heroku and then click the create new app button. From here, you just give your app a name. In our case, we're going to call it MyBerry. And then we just click create app. We'll give it a different name since this one's already taken. We'll call it mybrary web dev. Create that. And then from here, all we have to do is follow these steps to deploy. We can use the Heroku Git CLI. And all we have to do is install the Heroku CLI. And once that CLI gets installed, we can just copy over this Heroku login command 
paste this in here and follow the instructions. It'll default to your Git email, which is fine in our case. Then we need to enter our password. And then it'll say that you're logged in properly. And now we can add that Heroku remote to our project. So let's just copy over this Heroku remote since we already have our project initialized with Git. And that'll run. And now it says that our remote has been added. And now since we've already added and committed our code, all we need to do is push to Heroku. So we can just copy this command to push to Heroku, paste this in here, and that'll run. And as soon as that's done running, you'll see that it starts building our server on Heroku, which is perfect. And this will take a little bit to run, but once it's done running, you can actually access your site on Heroku by just clicking this open app button. So we'll click this here. You'll see that it says that there's nothing deployed right now. So I'll come back as soon as this finishes. And now that that's done deploying, all we have to do is refresh our application here. And you see the spin for a little bit since it's just starting up our application since we're on a free application. And as soon as that loads up, you'll see that our entire application that we created with our index page is going to be loaded up right here. You'll see that it throws an error. And that's because we don't actually have this environment variable for our database URL in our Heroku application. So if we go to Heroku, go to the settings, we can configure our environment variables here. And we can just put the key, which is going to be our database URL. And now we need to come up with the value for this key. And since we don't have a database on our server to access, we need to create a database separately from our server. And we can do that using MongoDB Atlas, which is a free way we can create a database for MongoDB. Once you create an account, all you need to do is click the build a cluster button. And from here, we can just choose the cluster that we want to build. In our example, we can just choose a free AWS cluster here in North America, whichever is closest to you. For this case, it's going to be here for me. This should just be defaulted for you selected. And we just want to keep all of these essentially completely default. And as you can see, this is going to be completely free for us. And if we hit create cluster, it's going to load for a little bit. And you see it's creating our cluster right here. And once this is done being created, we can actually pull the URL from this cloud hosted cluster into our Heroku app over here, and everything should work just fine. Now that our connection has finished initializing, all we need to do is click connect, add a MongoDB user. In our case, we'll call them user. And I'm just going to auto generate here a secure password. And we're going to want to copy this since we're going to need to know this password for later. We can click create the user. And now we can choose a connection method. And in our case, we want to connect to an application. And we're going to use this string here. So back in our application, we want to paste down that password so we don't lose it. Copy over this connection string, just like that. And if we paste that into here, what we need to do is we need to take that password that we created and we need to change this connection strings password section to have that password. So just delete that, paste in that password. And then all we need to do is click add. And now our database URL is added into our config and our server will be restarting with that configuration file. And we can try refreshing our page here. Now, as you can see with that loading, we have our actual server up and running. And that's all it takes to get the base work of our server set up and running. In the next video, we're going to create our first model, which will be the author model. And we're also going to create the roots for the create, index, and new page of that author. If you're enjoying this content, please make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss any more of these videos. And also check out the next video, which is going to be linked over here when it comes out. Thank you guys very much for watching and have a good day.